for me from Dr. Ladaris at the Portland R user group. So I wanted to share it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm just going to talk about R6 packages and R6 uh, objects. So if you do a clone, uh, I already have that. So I'm going to actually go to his uh, directory here, which will always be the um, last extension of the, the last folder on the GitHub URL. And I already have a little development branch that I made. All right. So what's really cool about this, let me go here and execute on R. When you go into um, his code, open classes.r6.r, that's what I have here. And this creates what will be a new environmental variable called my underscore stats underscore r6. So go ahead and run everything here. Hmm, where does he create that? Is it here? Oh, it's here. Okay. Oh, so here he actually calls the class. Okay. So he sets a class name. There's a class name for stat package result, R6. And back here, he's actually assigning that the my stats, uh, my underscore stats underscore R6. It's picked up here as an environmental uh, data type. It looks like this, which tells you it's the R6 object that we just created. And there are inputs and there are um, also S3 objects in here. So basically, um, when you typically do like an object and then a method, that's what's in here is like this is just an arbitrary class um, more idealistic than than meaningful so you just named it a class name but it doesn't really matter what you name class names although when you do get into inheritance it starts to matter and that's that's part of this but it's way too detailed for me to start going into here um, finally you know I, I understood going through actually executing this um, object that you're actually configuring uh, flags on the method side. So like get threshold, set threshold. You see these are telling you inputs that you can do on the method calling. So here's the more traditional programming. You're doing your object followed by your method here. Um, dollar sign is delineating. Now when you're doing stuff in Python, it's often a dot. Um, when you're doing stuff in C sharp, it's a dot. When you're doing stuff in R here, you use the dollar sign. So object method, very, um, just telling us what statistics we have loaded. So we're gonna do some investigation of p-values. So threshold is not set. This is more air handling stuff. So we need to set a threshold. So we execute and set threshold to 0.02. Okay. There's nothing really returned here, but if you go back to the um, the environmental uh, object that's that's in here, then uh, get set threshold. See, is actually in here. Um, you can start getting a sense of what the methods are in relation to the object by just clicking on it uh, over here in the IDE. So that's pretty cool. I've often wondered, like, well, what do you know what the defaults are? So I started uh, playing with that. So we set it to 0.02, right? Well, there's methods in there to tell us what we've set it to. And then 
um, when we run get significant results, we actually get results of anything from 0.02 or less. So we go back to our statistics table here, and we see that's why we get VersaColor from the Iris data set. We don't get Virginica or Setosa. If we want to get those, you can go ahead and, and re you know, reconfigure the threshold. So if we set it to the maximum, 0.5 for Setosa on the p-value, so we, we set the threshold, and we rerun our get significant results, we do not get Setosa. Now, I didn't want to ask this, because Ted's giving a presentation and he's doing an excellent job, but how do you know what the actual defaults are for things like that? I don't have a good answer. I don't know. But if you set this to um, something where you think the programmer may have done uh, not uh, without an equals to logical operator, right? The, the equal symbol is missing from, from the code somewhere. So we have to put in a greater than number to get a less than result. So we get Satosa. And I was like, okay, finally, this makes a lot of sense to me, but only because R6 is so similar to other programming languages. And when you're dealing with S3, which is the most common uh, class for our objects, then um, it, it's harder to understand. He did a really good job at that. I, I can't do that justice or um, get much more detailed than this, but I hope that this is helpful um, to anyone who's looking to kind of understand how the object-oriented programming underneath R actually works. So thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to sign off for now. Bye-bye.